Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to walk through how to use the SUMIF function in Microsoft Excel. Let's break down what this function is used for, how to use this function, and then give a few examples using the SUMIF function. The SUMIF function is used to sum, add together, something if a condition is met, which should make sense given the name SUMIF. So, how do we use this function? Well, if we just type into any cell here equals sum if, and then in open parentheses, we can see exactly what Excel wants from us to satisfy this function. We have range, criteria, and sum range. Let's go through these one by one to understand what Excel is asking from us. First, we have the range parameter. This is the cells over which you want Excel to check your criteria, meaning that for this parameter, you select all the cells that you want Excel to check. Next, we have the criteria. The criteria is your if portion of this function. So, if the cell in range is greater than 5, for example, add this to our sum. Lastly, we have an optional parameter called the sum range. This is the range of cells to add together. This is optional as you can omit it, and Excel will simply add the value in the range parameter if it meets the criteria we specified in the previous parameter. You cannot omit this parameter, however, if you are using, say, dates, names, etc. as your range parameter. This should make sense though, right, since we cannot sum two names, for example. We need some numbers. Alright, so now that we have a fundamental understanding of what Excel is asking from us, let's go through a few examples using the SUMIF function to ensure that you fully understand. First, let's do an example of our expenses on groceries. So, to begin, Let's just throw in some values for how much we spend on groceries, where every new row is simply a new trip to the grocery store. Let's say that we want to limit our spending to $50 a trip to the grocery store, and we want to know from our past trips how much we exceeded that $50 spending limit. Well, to do this in Excel, let's create another column, which will be called $50 minus our expenses. And any expense over $0 will be a trip that we exceeded our spending limit. So, to find the total, we must type equals sum if. Select our range, which will be our amount spent over $50. Then our criteria will be any of these cells that is greater than $0, meaning we want to sum, add together, all these values that are larger than $0. So, to do that, we put in quotation marks and then a greater than symbol, 0. So, as you can see, our range is the cells that we want to test our criteria which was the greater than zero we are testing for. As you can see in this example, we didn't need the sum range parameter. We just gave Excel our range and our criteria, and when you're working with money and numbers, this is great. But what about this example here where we want to know how much of each of our family members is spending in a month? Well, we must now implement the sum range parameter. So let's see how that works. If you want to pause the video here and give this one a try on your own, I would highly recommend that as well. Okay, so as you can see here, we have a list of all of our family members' transactions from the last month. So let's do what we did before. The range we are going to test our criteria on is going to be the family members' names now. Now, what about the criteria? Well, we are currently summing if the name is equal to this cell, which equals John. So we can simply click this cell and Excel will use this as our criteria. So this basically means sum if this cell equals John. Now lastly, we need to use the sum range parameter. This allows us to pick a range of numbers to sum if our criteria is met. So by selecting the number spent by each family member, we will add on that value associated with each of John's transactions. Now I'm just going to add in some dollar signs here to prevent the movement of the selected cells for the next part. All we have left to do is to drag down this formula here, and as you can see for each of these rows, we are now checking for the family member stated to the left of the sum cell. Thank you for checking out this video, and I hope it helped your understanding of what the sumIS function is in Excel, and how we can use the sumIS function in Excel. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, and consider checking out our Patreon page to support the channel. However, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about the information I provided in this video, please leave a comment down below and I will do my best to address your concerns.